So if you are a fan of sweet floral fragrances, if you're a fan of dessert-like fragrances or gourmands in general, I have a real treat for you. Not literally, but I have a delicious fragrance here. This one by the brand Mask Milano is called Madeline. This is a 2020 release. I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't give this one a chance when it first came out, and I'm only just now coming around to it, but I'm so excited to talk to you about this fragrance. I think it's absolutely amazing. Make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin this video and I talk to you about Madeline by Mask Milano, which is an amazing brand, I do want to start things off by mentioning that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on the bell icon, and of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or if you take something of value from this review. Now, the creative director for this brand, I met him in person a few times. We actually met up at his hotel room in the lobby and we shared a couple beers together. His name is Alessandro Brun. I even invited him as a guest on my channel several times. I'm gonna leave one of the extended interviews that we've done together as a card up here. And here's a fragrance that he released back in 2020. The perfumer is Fanny Ball, very accomplished perfumer. Of course, you can look up that perfumer's resume if you're interested. And here we have a beautiful gourmand fragrance and it's evocative of a girl drinking hot chocolate and sort of um a nice cafe it has this coffee like nature about it and it's not listed in the note breakdown neither is chocolate or cocoa or anything like that but if you look at the note breakdown there's a chestnut accord there are milky musks so you have like this lactonic nature about it you have a whipped cream accord or a chantilly accord in the opening you also have cumin seed oil if i'm not mistaken tuberose vanilla tonka beans some really deliciously gourmand ingredients so this fragrance if you are interested in sampling it which i think absolutely if you are a fan of gourmand perfumes this is super unique you should it is available at max aroma all of the links are going to be down below of course they carry this brand and many other really hard to find niche and designer fragrances at an amazing price and so one thing that i do enjoy about their service is aside from the free shipping um uh, not the free shipping, the fast shipping, and the amazing customer service, is I also enjoy the fact that they're very friendly, down to earth, and they give you that opportunity to sample fragrances before you purchase them. So I'm excited to talk to you about this Gourmand perfume. Let's go ahead and start things off by taking a quick look at the presentation. So right in the opening of this fragrance, you spray it on and immediately you get this coffee slash chocolatey slash vanilla vibe. And it's kind of like all of these ingredients are in a sense vying for attention. And interestingly enough, I did get a lot of that like hot chocolate, cocoa slash coffee vibe, but neither one of those two ingredients are listed in the note breakdown. Now you do get a chestnut accord. And one thing that I must say is that there is a very warm nature about this fragrance, warm and cozy. So it's the type of fragrance that I would love to wear in the colder weather. It's still quite cold here in New Jersey where I currently reside. And so this is the perfect type of fragrance for this type of weather. Once it starts dipping really low into the uh, tens or even single digits, man, this will definitely hold up in terms of the weighty nature of a lot of the ingredients in here. Now the vanilla in here, it's beautifully delicious. It's not overpowering in the sense that you can still pick up on the tuberose in the heart. And there's a little bit of a spicy kick in the opening, but just enough to complement the sweeter uh, facets of the fragrance. So you're gonna get that chestnut accord. And there's also quite something quite creamy and lactonic and very flavorful in the opening. And I'm guessing it's coming from that Chantilly Accord. So you definitely get this vibe of whipped cream in the opening, definitely giving it like a dessert-like vibe. But one thing that I really appreciate is that it never becomes overly sweet or cloyingly sweet to the point where, you know, it kind of veers in like juvenile or like overly youthful territory, it doesn't do that, right? It's no pink sugar by Aqualina. But you are going to get 
those sugary facets in combination with some kind of more grounded notes like the tuberose and you're gonna get some subtle woods in the bass. Nothing that is explicitly mentioned in the note breakdown, but you can tell there are a lot of properties sort of coalescing and coming together to give off that overall floral and gourmand scent. Now, in terms of this being a true gourmand, there are a lot of gourmand ingredients in here. The chestnut, the tonka bean, the vanilla, the cumin, the chantilly. There's a lot of edible ingredients in here and I feel like that will distract you initially but in the best way possible especially if you're a fan of gourmand ingredients now of course if you're not a fan of gourmand ingredients there are certainly many other fragrances from the brand that I would recommend you check out before this one if you're a fan of ambers check out tango if you're a fan of florals done slightly differently I would check out kintsugi but there are so many fragrances from this brand that there's a lot of options to check out and this one is definitely one of the sweetest options from the brand if not the sweetest and I really love the idea and the execution and I think that the perfumer Fanny Ball with the expertise of creative director Alessandro Brun did just a wonderful job with this fragrance. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I've tried a lot of fragrances with a whipped cream accord, and I've tried a lot of fragrances with vanilla and tonka bean. It seems like almost every fragrance out there has some level of vanilla and or tonka bean. This one is done so differently in the sense that sometimes I get a chocolatey nuance from it, sometimes I get a little bit of a coffee-like vibe from it. So it definitely goes in several different directions, but I truly Truly love the end result of this fragrance and I think they did a wonderful job both the perfumer and the creative director in creating a sweet floral perfume that's what smells quite different from other fragrances on the market longevity on this one is eight to nine hours on my skin which is great the projection was really good for the first hour of application I'm not sure if it ever radiated beyond an arm's length but the projection was pretty consistent in the sense that it didn't start to sit at about an elbow's length until like that fifth or sixth hour of application it became a skin scent at like that seven or eight hour mark in terms of the versatility I think this one definitely gives off a formal occasion kind of a vibe I think this one is perfectly unisex I I think the tuberose and geranium accents will appeal to somebody who's a little bit older and I think the sweeter accents will also appeal to somebody who's a little bit younger so I do sense this fragrance being rather versatile in my opinion and I think this one is you know basically functioning best for the colder weather and so this is the best time to wear it of course you can pull this off in the spring as well because we do get some pretty cool spring days here on the east coast especially where I live and in terms of the presentation I love it the graphic, the name, the frosted glass, the white cap. My final verdict on this fragrance is it's such a unique gourmand perfume that doesn't overly rely on some of the more stereotypical gourmand notes that you would typically find in fragrances like vanilla and tonka bean. And we certainly know that the market, whether it be designer or niche, is overly saturated with those ingredients. So I'm so blessed to have had the opportunity to talk to you about this fragrance. Of course, if you are interested in sampling it, which I would highly recommend, I don't recommend blind buys. I always recommend you sample fragrances as much as possible to diversify your olfactive palette. You may do so at maxaroma.com. Once again, all of the links are gonna be down below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned something from this video, please do consider showing your support by subscribing to the channel hit the bell icon so you stay notified on new uploads. Give this video a thumbs up if you took something of value. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.